Hello, I'm Jan Hutchins, and with me is... Olga Gasova. We're a happily married couple, and I'm in one room of our place, and she's in another. And we're talking in our daily meditation form, where we almost don't tell each other what the subject's going to be, so that we can have a fun adventure just responding to various topics. The one I'm proposing to uh, toss at Olechka, as I call her today, is a notion that comes from shamanism, where everything is alive, and so plants are alive and have something to teach us. And whether it's ayahuasca or other of the hallucinogenic plants, plants speak and have an effect on us. And that leads to an interesting interpretation of uh, addiction and uh, the misuse uh, of plant substances. So drinking, for instance, a person could get drunk and it is, in some ways, in shamanism, understood to be the plant talking to you. And that's why in cultures before we got so sophisticated we didn't pay attention to how everything's alive, we would in toasts, cheers, l'chaim. What is it in, uh, in Ukrainian, Olechka? Uh, Russian would be Nazdarovia. Sorry, uh, Ukrainian Nazdarovia and Russian, uh, yeah, we can say. Nazdarovia. Uh, yeah, can you say for help? So this, this certain sort of wish isn't just as we do it now to clink glasses and have a moment. It's to actually ask the spirit in the spirits, why it's called spirit, to give us a good ride, to teach us something of value, to help us come to some understanding with the energy that comes from the alcohol and the beverage. So we, they take it seriously, and originally it was taken very seriously this way. And so there's a way of looking at people who drink a lot or get caught up in drugs as having actually the shamanic urge, the urge for altered states of consciousness, which is a healthy thing, and the way in which they might begin to have a closer association with life and a way of paying attention to the more spiritual aspects of life, but because we don't have that support system in our culture, they wind up lost alcoholics and without recognizing that they have sort of an inherent urge to get high. So uh, that process is one that I think we can talk about from a variety of perspectives, and there are some brain chemistry stuff that we'll talk about as we get started. Uh, but looking at this as a means of trying to have a new way of coaching people or helping them understand the power that they may have, they are manifesting in uh, and with uh, substances, substances that they are abusing or alcohol. So how does that strike you, my dear? Well, uh, what I suggest you don't reflect on is why people indulge in addictions from spiritual let's, let's call it spiritual standpoint what are your thoughts and you know my we already discussed it but share your thoughts um, on that what is the fundamental reason I think the one we're talking about here is a reason the fundamental reason in our culture since we're more I judge sort of repressed and don't do things as naturally is because people are in pain. We are suffering in one way or another, and the drug is a way of hiding the pain. Yeah, we're in the middle of the, well, and I are in the middle of watching House. We're just starting season eight, and a lot of the content uh, of that show is around his issues with dealing with his constant pain in his leg. And so I think pain is an issue, distraction, avoidance, of psychic pain is an issue, and uh, and the social encouragement to be one of the gang uh, it, it is also part of it. The, the binge drinking and the group drinking, and let's go have a drink. Don't know what else to do. It does turn on the turn off the, the inhibitions a little bit for people who otherwise would be more repressed. That is the only way they can start to be themselves. So, what, what is your take on? Well, what what you suggest, you reflect on more psychological aspects of addiction. So, my question was more, what is spiritual aspect? 
And as we discuss, I will just share with the audience what we uh, reflected on uh, previously, practically today in the car. Um, and the reason why we reflected, guys, I'll just give you background. It's Labor Day. We had a great celebration in Sonoma during the wine festival. So it's abundance of food from various vendors and abundance of wine. We tasted a lot of it. And as you know, that can go much further to the point of substance abuse and addiction. Some people experience addictions to alcohol, some to drug, some to love and sex, some for attention, and you name it. But when, when we look at particularly substance abuse, what people look for in that is transcendence, is the space of consciousness that are alternative to this tangible reality, the living in the form, in the body that has its own limitations. And therefore, the, the sensory perception of the world is limited by, by opportunities that the body presents. But as humans looking for God, some, some uh, articulated in, in other uh, ways, I'm, I'm looking to be enlightened, I'm looking for higher state of consciousness. I'm looking for God. I'm looking for that and another. But it also comes to the, I want to transcend these limitations of the body because I want to unity. I want this ultimate connectivity with, as we like to call it, divine, without giving it too, too much um, lingua, <laughs> spiritual lingua. Connectivity with something higher than this limited sense of self. So we're looking for altered state of consciousness or higher state of consciousness. And drugs and alcohol can present such opportunities sometimes in the easiest way because spiritual practices take time. Most of the time it takes time. And sometimes the awakening that we're seeking is not the result of practice even. Sometimes it just strikes you. And if you're interested to talk about that, we will. Let us know. But we're not talking about the ultimate enlightenment. What we're looking for here is how a person who is fully embodied in and identified with human experience, how a person look for alternative states in the addictions, in substance simply because we're looking for shortcuts. We don't want to do the work, do the inner work, transcending which that which creates limitations. And it's usually our illusions. It's usually our emotions. It's usually our perceptions filtered through our past experience or personality characteristics or something like that. So we're looking for shortcut, but Suggestion is following, while this altered state of consciousness they still can be experienced through uh, different medicines and you name it, they can't be as sustainable and fully revealing the truth as what is the result of inner work, what is the result of continuous practices that allow us to be so aware, so conscious, so present to our experiences that we soon transcend them because there is no judgment any longer. Yes, Jen? Well, this is an interesting point. The way I, I'm seeing and hearing what you're saying, the whole unity desire makes sense. Hey, baby, I love everybody. As you get drunker and drunker, you love some people. Some people get angry and then anger comes out, but a lot of people get want to make love, want to love one another, fall all over each other, get all gooey and fall into that state of wanting to be one with everything. And I would hope that we develop as a culture a way of speaking to young people and uh, others who have this way of experiencing the connection that you're talking about uh, and say this is the underlying reason you're doing this and there is another way. There is a a longer, more challenging road of removing the artificial separations that we develop through our ego identification and other ways we build a, a castle of protection and then have to drink down the bar bar 
barricades uh, that would allow you to have a more consistent, less damaging to your liver form of this unity you desire. And honor the desire at the same time we offer a different way to achieve the state. Here we go. This is our Google Hangout Reflections for Labor Day. And we will meet you guys again in uh, one single day. We do it daily, so join us. Let us know what you want us to reflect on. Excuse me, lovely young lady. Could I interest you in having a drink with me? Are we talking about substance abuse all the way? All the way. All the way. Cheers. Yeah. Okay, sweetheart. See you in the bedroom. Oh, see you in the living room.